All right, in this video, I'm going to show you my collection of new versions, which ultimately led me to the King James Bible. Um, <clears throat> here we have the Second Vatican Council. Now, I showed this in my video, my documentary, uh, The Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. It's available here on YouTube. You can watch it for free. And I show this qu quote up close, as well as quite a few other quotes about this issue. But this is page number 112, number 22 in this uh, Vatican II Council. It says, But since the Word of God must be readily available at all times, the Church, with motherly concern, sees to it that suitable and correct translations are made into various languages, especially from the original texts of the sacred books. If when the opportunity presents itself and the authorities of the Church agree, these translations are made jointly with churches separated from us, they can then be used by all Christians. So the Second Vatican Council right there is saying we're going to make translations um, for Protestant churches. That's what they're talking about. Not just Catholics, but Protestants. All right, let me show you the quote here, if I can get this thing on camera. Hopefully you can read that. Right, there it is. If you want to see a better picture of that, you can watch my documentary. So, um, this isn't some kind of a conspiracy theory and all oh, that's nonsense there's no truth to this or whatever else right there it is second vatican council catholics and protestants working together to form new versions here we have the nestle's 27th edition the nestle land 27th edition and again this is in my documentary the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. Okay, again, I will try to show this quickly here. If you can see that, the highlighted portion, pause it and read it. No question that this is going on. Catholics and quote-unquote Protestants working together to produce new Bible versions that are, excuse me, based on the Nestle Lalonde. Greek text. So, how did it all begin? Well, in 1881, um, there was a uh, committee at Cambridge, Oxford. The, the original King James Bible was made with three different committees. One at Westminster, one at Cambridge, one at Oxford. And there was 40 or 54 men at the beginning, 47 till it was done, it took seven years. Um, some dropped out, I think a few died during the process. It's a long time to be working on a translation, um, greatest translation ever made. But um, they came out in the, in the 1800s, late 1800s and said, should we come up with a new uh, revised you know, edition? Should we revise the King James Bible? Two of the men that were on that committee, um, Brooke, Foss Westcott and Fenton John Anthony Hort came out and they said, yes, we should revise and we have new manuscripts. We have Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus were the two big ones. Aleph and B were the designa designation there, Aleph being Sinaiticus, B being Vaticanus. And there's major problems with both. I'll be talking about that in another video. But they came out and they said, we need to make this updated new edition. It's, we found older manuscripts that weren't available to the translators of the King James Bible. A whole big thing there. And so they came out with this new revised version, the revised version of 1881. And as I said in the other video, right here is a revised version of 1881. Okay. This is the real thing. You can see it right there. Revised version. 1881. This is not a copy. This is a real revised version of 1881. Right there. Okay. Um, and they followed what would later become the Nestle Alan text. All right. The minority Greek text, the text that's based on less than 1% of extant Greek manuscripts. Again, if you don't understand the issue. Um, <clears throat> down through the centuries, Bible believers would be making 
editions of scripture and they would be using them and the old ones would wear out and they'd say, okay, we need to write a new copy of this by hand. It wasn't until the 16th century with the invention of the Gutenberg press that they were able to mass produce manuscripts of the Bible, uh, you know, New Testaments and whatnot. Um, before then, it was all handwritten. So they would make handwritten copies. Well, obviously the copies were out, they make new ones. Copies were out, they make new ones because you're using it. You know, my old Bible here, which is, a, is about 23 or so years old because I bought it, I think in 2001. Um, this thing here, I have it duct taped together. That's falling apart. The old statement goes, a Bible that's falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. Uh, very true. But Bible believers, if you're reading your Bible a lot, it's got tears, it's got pages that are coming out and you had to tape it and you know what I'm talking about. Well, it was the same thing with Bible believers down through the centuries. So to say now we found these two ancient manuscripts in the 19th century that are from the 4th century, um, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, and they're in excellent condition, well then that proves nobody used them. Logically, you can figure that out. But they came out with this revised version, 1881, for the New Testament, 1884-85 for the Old Testament and New Testament, the whole Bible, the revised version. A lot of people are confused about that. They'll say, there are thousands of changes in the King James Bible, thousands of errors. And what they'll say is, they, I see this in the comments. People will say, in 1881, the 1881 you know, King James Bible doesn't resemble the, 17, you know, the 1611. The 1611 King James and the, you know, this one up here, the 1611 and the, seven, or in the 1881, there's lots of changes between the two. Yes, because the 1881 is a new version. It's a Vatican version. Okay comes from manuscripts that go back to the Vatican. The King James Bible does not. That's why the King James Bible, you can't use it if you're a Catholic. Uh, at least now, back in the old, you know, older times that they would say that. They would tell Catholic children, you can't read a King James Bible. I've met scores of former Catholics and they've told me the same thing. Now, you know, they're trying to kind of cozy up to the King James Bible because their new version scam is failing terribly. But uh, for most of the time, uh, Catholics were forbidden from reading the King James Bible. But <clears throat> there you have the 1881. It came to America and was published as the American Standard Version in 1901. All right, now here is my American Standard Version. This is a 19, uh, it's a second edition, I believe. Again, original printing. Um, Newly edited by the American Revision Committee, 80-1901 Standard Edition. This is a 1929. Okay, but you can see right there, um, Thomas Nelson and Sons, Roman Catholic uh, book publisher, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> American Revision Committee, 80-1901, right there talks about it, but... It's really hard to see it because the gold gilding is rubbed off the edge here, but I'll again come forward here and show you. Hopefully you can see right there, American Standard Version, the ASV. So, you know, and there'll and they'll still be, you'll still see professors, Bible college professors or pastors or whatever, and they'll say that the American Standard Version was the most accurate ever. Then why did you have the New American Standard Version? Well, the Revised Version was the most accurate ever. Then why the American Standard Version, the New American Standard Version, the Revised Standard Version? Uh, why? If these were the most accurate ever to the Westcott and Hort text, you wouldn't have needed, needed to update it again and again and again. Kind of an issue. So, um, <clears throat> I have a lot of different editions, uh, a lot of different things that, that uh, have come out. I'm not going to show every single new version in my collection. I've got lots of them down there. Um, I try to keep them as low as possible because that's kind of representative of what they're about. Um, here I have a New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, the Jehovah's Witness Bible. And um, I have their Greek text over here, which was actually given to me by a pastor that I used to know, a PhD from uh, Tennessee Temple, I think and um, the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. And you go back into the Old, or into the uh, New Testament here, 
and uh, see if I can find an example. This is fun to show Jehovah's Witnesses because it just blows their minds. I like to do this. If you can get one of these, you know, use it. Um, right here you have the word kurios, I think is how you say it, Greek for Lord. And over there you have in their translation it says Jehovah. <laughs> So they say it should be translated Jehovah. Well, but their own text is saying it's Lord. So, um, but you know, this one I've showed in my documentary as well. And it gets into the fact that in the beginning it talks about this edition of the Nestle's text was produced by two Jesuits right there. I'm not going to show this one. It's in my documentary. Good close up video, not me holding up to the camera, but here and here it talks about two Jesuit scholars creating this Greek text. So there's that. And here <clears throat> I have the English Standard Version, just a standard hardback English Standard Version. I have referred to that in different studies. Here I have the original message Bible, Eugene Peterson. This one's put out by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. If you don't know the story, um, Billy Graham... Uh, this message Bible here, the messy message, was not doing very good until the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association came along and uh, helped them out, you know, financially and getting bought these things by the cases. And they were giving these away at the uh, Billy Graham Crusade things, you know, I, probably a reason for that, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but down there at the bottom, you can see, hopefully, the thing of the B Billy Graham Evangelistic Association down at the bottom. So there's that, this first edition of the message, message, and then you have the whole message, New Testament, Old Testament right there. And then here's the message remix. Like, you know, you wouldn't think it could get any worse, but it does. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Um, I had a, in my Ridiculous Bible Perversions of the New Age, video. I showed all these Bible zines, these magazine Bibles that come out and they're all these neat flashy things inside them to attract children with the shiny letters on there and everything, you know. Um, explore why is God so awesome? Yeah, man. <laughs> Skater uh, Bible. Um, Revolve 2009. A girly, you know, magazine Bible. Refuel 2. Um, the Complete New Testament. What is radical faith? Lots of cool extras. You know, there you go. Um, Divine Health. Edited by Dr. Don and Mary Colbert. It's all marketing. That's what this stuff is all about. All these nice little glossy pages and whatever. And then you have uh, the Gangster Bible. Real. And this one came with a uh, rap CD. I don't know if I still have that thing in here or not. I actually played some of the music from it. No, I got rid of it. Yeah, right there is where the CD used to be. But uh, yeah, uh, how to be a gangster, how to be a street thug and whatever, you know. For Jesus, of course. Uh, becoming Fashion Bible. Fashion New Testament. Um, a line. And there you have sex, cess. Success with the opposite sex. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> and the biker Bible. Redefine the Bible zine for baby boomers. <laughs> yeah. It's all because they're trying to reach people. Yeah, no, they're trying to reach people as a demographic, as a way to make money. It's an apt, untapped resource. Over here we have the uh, New King James Version with the occult tracatra on it, the three-pointed star of witchcraft. This is exactly what it was, uh, or what it is. There's no such thing as a symbol for the Godhead. It's forbidden in Scripture. And all the issues with the New King James Version. I have a whole series of videos against the New King James, showing that it's you know, made some serious departures away from the King James Bible. Here you have the Holman Christian Standard Bible right here. This is made for policemen, the policeman's Bible 
right there. Nice. Uh, the New Life version. Uh, there's a lot of problems with that one. You can see all my little bookmark things there in the top. Lots of them. Um, finding all kinds of issues with this thing. Um, studying this stuff for hours, you know. Again, it, it's, it isn't just a, oh, well, you just pick these up and then you just stick them on your shelf to look smart or something. I study these things for hours, many hours. That's why I come to my conclusions. Here you have the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Youth Bible. This is also in my um, Real Bible Version Issue Exposed video. And uh, some of the stuff in here, you know, this is supposed to be for Protestants, and yet it's um, advice for Catholics. New Revised Standard Version is supposedly a Protestant Bible, but yet it's got Catholic stuff in it. Kind of hearkening back to the original uh, issue here, the Second Vatican Council. Hmm. So there you have that. They have, of course, the Trichetra all throughout the thing, symbol of the Holy Trinity. Even though the Bible says not to make any graven image of the Godhead. I was trying to find one here, but just flipping through it. Um, but all sorts of problems with this thing. I can't find one now that I'm looking for one. I can't find it. Oh, wait, there's one. Okay. Catholic Connections, the Communion of Saints. You can see the three interlocking circles right there. The Trichetra in the middle. So, yeah. The Common English Bible. Again, lots of uh, bookmarks in the top there. Lots of them. Um, this one here is just the New Testament. Uh, but this, they were Jesuits openly sitting on the translation team. Um, you know, Jesuit educated and opened, you know, SJ uh, people. Not just that went to a Jesuit school, in other words, but actual Jesuit priests sitting on the translation team of this Common English Bible New Testament. Again, the pr whole purpose of the Jesuit order was the Counter-Reformation, to bring all Protestants back under the authority of the Catholic Church. That's what this is about. Second Vatican Council. I've proved it. Here we have the Amplified Bible, which is one of the most ridiculous things you'd ever want to read. I don't recommend even reading it. Um, let me cover this. I don't remember if I covered this one in this one. I know I did in the other video, but I'll just say it really quickly. Here we have the NIV 1973 edition that came out. Copyright 1973. Um, yeah. New York International Bible Society. New York, New York, 1973. If you can see that up top there. Okay. So there you go. They'll say the NIV came out in 1974. Well, maybe released fully, totally to the public, but here's a 1973. Um, and then they came out with the NIRV. Uh, the 1981 NIV was kind of the full one that they came out with, but then they came out with the NIRV, the NI New International Reader's Version, supposed to be making things easier to understand, and all of it was was just a gender-neutral, gender, you know, kind of a thing that they were coming out with. Oh, yeah, the uh, new versions, by the way, if you don't know this, the new versions were actually leading the way in the whole gender, neutral, gender, let's uh, say, we can't say brethren, we'll say brothers and sisters. You know, we won't say man, it'll be human or person or something like that. And so they failed in the with the NIRV. There was also an NIVI, uh, I think is what it was called. And that was actually, it was the inclusive language edition or something. And it actually was banned in America. And then they re-released it as the NIRV. Big controversy on that. Failed. And then they eventually came out in 2001, I think it was, with this one, the Today's New International Version. Again, people got really upset about it. It's changing things um, not anywhere at all in the Nestle's text. Even their own corrupt Greek text, they're putting things into this TNIV that's not supported by any Greek manuscript out there. And then they'll say it's the most accurate. Uh, they're lying. And then they came out with, I think it was 2005, well, the whole Bible, the TNIV whole Bible here, and then the 2011 NIV. And um, so there's that. And then you have here the distilled Bible. 
which is in my ridiculous Bible perversions of the New Age. Um, but I have to read this one here. This is supposed to be Second Timothy, someplace here, and it says, As you teach God's message, never turn or twist, just go straight down the line. Ignore those who complicate God's word, deny the future resurrection of the body, and tolerate indecency. They are trash cans, and you are a golden goblet. Don't mix company. <laughs> You're a golden goblet. Yeah, okay. Distilled. Maybe they should be called the Distillery Bible. But I'll show you here real quickly. Right there is the paragraph. Right there you can read it. About you being a golden goblet. So, there you go for that. Isn't that nice? I bet before now you never knew that you were a golden goblet. You know, I guess maybe that was supposed to be compared to the King James Chosen Vessel, you know, or something. But, uh, yeah, Golden Goblet. So there's the uh, Distilled Bible. Um, here you have the Clear Word and another one. Here you have the, uh, the Green Bible, Forward by Desmond Tutu. Okay. Um, and a whole bunch of New Age freaks and whatever else, uh, people that hate god and hate the lord jesus christ and they're writing things in here and and it's all made out of recycled paper <laughs> i did a video um showing this thing and I, I stuck it outside i said i did find one good use for it and i had my big professional saw my 394 xp and i had the bar sitting on it and i said keeps your saw out of the dirt you know so your cutters don't get you know dinged up and whatever else but um down here i showed you the this in one of my recent studies i have veggie tail bibles um <clears throat> i had a request to do a thing about veggie tails so many years ago and i it's just it's there i keep thinking i need to do that but it's been years and i haven't gotten around to doing it yet but some of the ridiculous nonsense that's in these children's bibles not just veggie tail bibles but children's bibles in general some really wicked things that are in there um so maybe i'll eventually get around to doing that uh, here we have a New American Bible, Roman Catholic Bible, and um, this one I got at a used bookstore. Again, a lot of these, some of these are sent to me, a lot of these I get it at a uh, used bookstore, and I thought this was interesting. Right here in the inside cover, it says Lord, and it's an all-seeing eye. <laughs> so there you go. That's your Lord, the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. If you're Roman Catholic, there you go. Um, you say, what well, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Yeah, that's plural, eyes. God is not a cyclops. He's not a single-eyed monster. The Antichrist, his right eye is darkened. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and then finally, I will show this one yet, and then I'll go on to another video. But this is the original and true Reims New Testament. Um, a lot of Catholics don't even know about this issue. Um, if you have a modern Dewey Reams, it's probably a Challoner revision. This is the original. Okay, this is what it, how big it would have been. Now, it would have probably been a, a large type of Bible like the big King James Bibles I have up here. Um, but, you know, the New Testament Reams, it was uh, annotations. Here you have Romans chapter 11. It ends here is where it ends. And chapter 12 starts there, and this is all annotations that they have. So there's all these notes that the Jesuits wrote back there in 16... Well, this had actually been 1582, excuse me. So Reims, 1582, and then the Dewey Old Testament from 1610. Three volumes of the Old Testament, one volume of the New Testament. And you can see each one's about the size of a you know, phone book or something. Um, and this is the one that uh, Roman Catholics, this is the full Roman Catholic edition. They have one that's for Protestants as well. This is a Catholic edition. So this has all the notes in it about, you know, burning heretics and all the other stuff. You know, the, to shed the blood of heretics is not to shed the blood of martyrs and saints, you know. No more than the shedding of, you know, thieves and malefactors and whatever. Back in the book of Revelation. Again, I've showed that uh, quotation in other videos. I won't show it here. But um, again, to explain this whole thing, um, 
I have the new versions. I'm not afraid of the new versions. I've spent many hundreds of hours reading new versions, going through, looking at notes, doing the you know, study notes, studying who the translators are, um, researching this subject very thoroughly. So um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section down below. But that will be it for this video. And I'm going to move on to the next one. And I'll talk about uh, some other subject. I'm not sure what the next one will be on yet, but uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.